Hi there, I'm Professor E. Welcome to the robot program. In this episode, I'm going to explain a little bit more about some of the programming concepts we use in our videos. We're going to learn about variables and if-else logic. Let's start with our Blockly workspace. So I'm already in Blockly, and if I want to code something, I can see that all the options are over here in this gray menu. And we can also see that we have something here that says create variable. So not only are we going to create a variable, I'm also going to show you how to use them. But what is a variable? I want you to think of a variable almost like a container for storing something. And there are different types of containers. We can have an integer container, and that will store a number like 1, negative 2, 3, any integer number. We can have variables that are called Boolean. That means that they contain the value true or false. So in that case, it's our Boolean container. There are lots of different data types that can be stored as variables. A variable is just a way to represent some information that we need to use throughout our program. So why don't we create our own variable? If I click on Create Variable, I can give my variables any name that I want. It's a good coding practice to always maintain a consistent type of naming convention. I always like to start every new word with a capital and put all of my words together into one long word. So for example, I'm going to call this variable control flag. All one word with capitals. I can view the variables by going to the bottom of the menu and clicking on variables. And here are the different blocks relating to variables. So I can clear my variables, I can set a variable to a specific value, or I can just view any variable. So I'm going to click set item to. An item is just the placeholder for the variables. So we click here. These are all the different variables that are currently available within Blockly. So there's one called item, which is just a general variable, one that's called camera is tracking, camera object color, and we can see the one we created called control flag is down here. So right now, control flag doesn't have any information in it, but I want to set control flag to some sort of value. And I want this to be a container that stores integers, like I was talking about at the beginning. So up here, I'm going to go to math. I'm going to choose an integer here. And I'm going to set control flag to 0. That means wherever I see the variable control flag, I can think of it like the number 0. Or if I change it to, say, 5. Now whenever I see control flag, it actually represents the number 5. And we can continue to update the contents of this variable throughout our program. So what can we actually do with our variables? Well, why don't we combine it with some if-else logic to actually control JD? Logic is a way to provide different decision-making branches for your code. If something happens, do this code. But if something else happens, do this code. It provides our robots with lots of different options. You can find the logic up here. And you can see we have a couple different options. Click on the if do block. And we see here there's a little gear icon. If you click on the gear icon, you see else if, else, and currently it has an if statement. So this is where we can add all the different components to our decision-making block here. So right now, if we look, you can see that it says if do. So it's got one decision. If this is true, do this. Let's make our statement a little bit longer. If the first condition is true, do something else, do something else. So I'm going to slide this else block under if, and now if I click off the gear icon, I can see I have two options. If this is true, do this, else do this. We have to decide what we actually want to put into the if and else statements. And again, we can go into logic, and here are some of the options. If blank equals blank, if blank and blank, not and true. So we've got a couple different logic options. I'm going to show you the equals. So if blank equals blank, and if you click on the equals, you can see all these different comparisons. If it's not equal, if it's less than, greater than, less than or equals to, we've got lots of different options. I'm going to say if our control flag, again, we go into variables and item. If the control flag is equal to 1, let's have JD do some sort of auto position. Let's have him take a bow. Let's take a look at that. If control flag is equal to 1, JD will do auto position weight bow. Okay, so that statement makes sense. 
If you're not sure about your logic, it's best to read it back to yourself in English. Walk yourself through it as if you were giving instructions to a friend. So for our else statement, let's choose a different auto position wait command. Let's have JD wave. You'll notice there's no comparison statement for the else decision because it is else. So if the control flag is equal to one, we do this else or otherwise in all other conditions, we want him to wave. So we don't need that second comparison statement. Else is like our default. If the first statement is not true, do whatever else says. Why don't we try this code and see what it looks like? Let's start the script and see what happens when we execute it. So if our code is correct here, we said the control flag is equal to zero. If it's equal to one, he should bow, otherwise he should wave. So it's equal to zero, so he should wave. Let's click start. Okay, so he waves, that's good. Let's set control flag to one. All right, now we expect him to bow. There we go. So we're using our variable called control flag to execute two different options for the robot. What happens if we do, let's change control flag to 10. So it's not equal to one, which means it does the else. So he should wave. Perfect. Our code does exactly what we want it to do. Now let's see if we can provide him with some more decision-making options. To do that, we'll click on the gear and we're gonna add else if. You can add as many else if commands as you want. Why don't we add two? So now we can add two more decisions to this entire logic block. We're gonna have if control flag is equal to one. Let's go into our comparisons again and choose the equals. And we want our variable control flag again. And we're gonna choose another number. All right, so the first one was equal to one. Let's make the second one equal to two. So if control flag is equal to two, JD is going to, what do we want him to do this time? Let's have him do, let's have him do fly. That's always a good one. Okay, so last time I put in all those blocks manually, you can actually right click and click duplicate to get all the same information. So that's what I'm gonna do for this third else statement here. Okay, now if control flag, is let's have it be greater than two. Then he's going to do one more auto position. Let's have him point. Okay, so we have four different decisions here. Let's walk through them, make sure we understand our code. So let's set the control flag to one. If the control flag is equal to one, He's going to do bow. If the control flag is equal to two, he's going to execute fly. Else, if the control flag is greater than two, he's going to point. And if none of those are true, he's going to wave. So looking at our numbers, we've got one, two, and greater than two. What's the one number, or the one integer, where he's gonna execute else, if it's less than one? So zero, negative one, negative two. We're gonna try that out. So I've set control flag to one. Let's execute and make sure he does the bow. All right, start. All right, control flag is equal to one, he bows. If control flag is equal to two, he should fly. Now let's set the control flag to 10. It's not equal to one, so he won't bow. It's not equal to two, so he won't fly. It is greater than two, so he should point. Remember that we can only execute one of these statements. Only one of them can be true. If more than one of them is true, it's going to execute the first thing that it gets to. So you have to watch for that when you type out this logic. So start. Okay, he pointed, excellent. And now last but not least, we wanna choose one where none of the if statements is true. Let's say negative one. Set control flag to negative one, he should wave. There we go. So that's an example of how variables and if-else logic can be combined to control your robot. The last thing I'm going to show you is nested if-else logic. 
That means we have an if statement under an if statement. So I'm going to take out the point for now. So we're going to say else if control flag is greater than two, I want it to branch into two more decisions. So from logic, I'm going to choose another if block. And so now, if the control flag is greater than two is true, so yes, it's greater than two, it's something like 10, we're gonna have another check for it. In this case, I'm going to say, if control flag is equal to, let's just choose a random number. Let's choose, let's choose 10 again, because that's what we were using. If the control flag is equal to 10, I'm gonna have him walk forward. This is gonna be our one special move forward command. And let's have him go forward just for 1500 milliseconds. Now he needs an else statement in here. So if it's not equal to 10, it's greater than two, but it's not equal to 10, let's have him go backwards. So in movement, I'm gonna add move reverse, same amount. Okay, our code's getting more complicated. I'm gonna zoom out so we can see all of it. All right, so let's just walk through our code again. If the control flag is equal to one, bow. If the control flag is equal to two, fly. If the control flag is greater than two, we're gonna check. If the control flag is equal to 10, he'll move forward. Otherwise, if it's greater than two and not equal to 10, he's gonna move backwards. And if none of that is true, he's going to wave. Whew, it's a lot of options. So let's try it out. So first, let's set the control flag to 10. So we know from our code, we're expecting him to move forward. There he goes. Now let's choose a number that's greater than two and not equal to 10. Let's choose six. And I start that, and he goes backwards. So our code is working exactly how we expect it to. Let's see if there's a way we can break our code. I wanna show you what happens if we did something wrong. Let's change our nested logic. So if the control flag is equal to one, he should move forward. So instead of 10, I change it to one. Will he ever move forward? Take a look at this code and decide for yourself, will he ever move forward? The answer is no. Because if our control flag is equal to one, he's going to execute the first statement that equals one, and that's bow. So he's never gonna get here. And if he gets to here, see how it says control flag is greater than two? One isn't greater than two, so it won't jump to the second level of decision-making, which is our nested logic. Let's just try that and make sure that's what it actually does. Okay, he bowed. So again, we have to make sure that all of our numbers and all of our logic aligns in a way that makes sense so that we can actually get to that second level of logic. The other type of variables you can use here are Boolean. Let's create a new variable that will be a Boolean type. So I'm gonna go into create variable. I'm gonna call this one run Professor E's code. And at the very beginning, I'm going to set that variable to this piece right here under logic. See, it says true. So let's change this to set run Professor E's code to false. Okay, I've got two options, true or false. And we're gonna add in another set of logic. Getting really crazy here. Look at all of our nested logic. I'm gonna move everything we already had into the do statement. So if run Professor E's code, can I add this all in here? If run Professor E's code is equal to true, then it'll do everything we had to do before. If Professor E's code is false, nothing's going to happen because we didn't have an else statement. This is good. So I'm almost giving myself a little on off switch for my code. If that variable is true, we'll run the code and it'll do everything it did before. And if run Professor E's code is set to false, it's not gonna do anything. So let's actually try that and see what happens. So right now it's set to false. Let's hit start. And we can see in our terminal window here, it actually tested. It said line one, 
Professor E code equals false. Line three, it tested. If that variable is equal to true, it decided that wasn't true, and so it went to the end. You can actually follow along with your logic using this little execution over here. So now let's change it to true and set the control flag to, I want them to wave. Let's have it go negative five. We're gonna see all the options that it tests. So let's click start and he waved. Let's walk through the terminal to see what happened. So in line one, it said run Professor E's code was equal to true, good. If that's true, good, it went to the next line and it said control flag was equal to negative five. If control flag equals one, not true. So it jump, jumped to the next line. If control flag is equal to two, again, not true. So jump to the next statement. If control flag is greater than two, again, no. Else control command auto position wave. And that's what it did. This is a great way to see the execution of your code by following along with the different lines that it shows. Check out the other robot program videos to explore how you can use variables and if-else logic to create different programs and scripts for your robot. Thanks for watching this episode, and we'll see you next time. What is a variable? What is a Boolean data type? Which logic statement can be used to provide more than two logic branches? Find the answers at theroboprogram.com.